When you are buying real estate, folks, when you are doing deals, okay, it's no secret that not all deals are made the same, right? Anybody who's anybody is going to tell you, you got to go after the off-market deals, right? You got to find off-market deals. You got to find motivated sellers, right? If you can reach a motivated seller before they put their property on the market, you have the best chance at buying with equity. This is perfect for wholesalers, flippers, buy and hold investors, even real estate agents trying to get listings, right? So the question is, who are the most motivated sellers? Who are the best sellers I need to target? Who should I be reaching out to when I'm looking for motivated sellers? And the answer is there's a ton of motivated sellers. But you know what? Today we're only going to go over five because these, in my opinion, are the five most motivated sellers. If you focus your efforts on these five types of sellers, these five types of property owners, I should say, because they're not actually sellers until you reach them, you will make the most money. Let's go. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise, and I am here to help you make the most money in your real estate investments, right? Whether you're trying to buy and hold, flip houses, wholesale houses, heck, even if you're a real estate agent trying to get listings, trying to do deals, I'm here to help you, folks. I personally, and I think this is important that I let you know this, right? There's a lot of gurus out there that only make money by selling you educational programs. Have they ever actually utilized that education in the real world? So with that in mind, I need you to know that I have sold over $200 million worth of real estate as a broker, number one, and also as a reseller. Number two, I currently manage a $75 million real estate portfolio, right? I think it's important that you understand that, right? So I'm a guy that has actually walked the walk. I've utilized these strategies in real life and continue to do so, right? So with that said, y'all know you got to find motivated sellers. And these are the five most motivated sellers, right? When you're trying to reach out to these people, most likely through direct mail, and guess what? Stick around to the end of the video. I will show you how to actually get the letters in their hands, how to motivate or how to reach these motivated sellers. I'll give you that information utilizing the same platforms that I use every day. I'll get that to you at the end of the show, so stick around. But first, you need to know who you're trying to reach, okay? And who you're trying to reach are these five people. There's a lot of different types of motivated sellers, but in my experience doing that 200 milli, these are the five that are going to give you the biggest ROI when you're spending your time and dollars trying to reach them. Number five, it goes down. So like one is the best, in my opinion. So five is the least cool. But I didn't want to start with the most cool, right? We're going to build you up, right? Number five, divorce. Woo, boy, do I love divorce. When old Ray Ray is out there sticking it to his secretary on Thursday nights coming home late with some lipstick on his collar, and Kimmy Kim Kim finds out, that typically ends the marriage. That is awesome. I love when that happens. Why? When Ray Ray and Kimmy Kim Kim, when they can't get along anymore because he's giving the stiffy stiff stiff to the secretary there, that creates a motivated seller. And what do motivated sellers do, folks? They provide us income. They have a problem. They need to quickly get rid of their home. And that's when we stroll in. Hey, I can't keep Ray Ray from giving the pumpy pump pump to the secretary, but I can take that property off your hands so you can get him out of your life as fast as humanly possible. Divorce, people going through divorces are an amazing lead for investors, right? Number four, foreclosure. Now this one is a double-edged sword. This one works really well when you're in an appreciating cycle. Doesn't work so well when you're in a depreciating cycle. All right, let me explain. People that can no longer pay their mortgage, and it takes a long time for the bank to actually foreclose on somebody, right? So they don't have to actually be in foreclosure. They have to just like be at the point where they can't uh, pay their mortgage. They're no longer paying their mortgage, and the bank is eventually going to foreclose on them. Ideally, you'd like to get in there before the bank has already like done actions uh, so you can try to, to pick it up, don't have to deal with it. But foreclosures are great when the market is going up, right? Say you got somebody... 
who's got a hundred thousand dollar mortgage on their house and the market has appreciated over the last several years and now their house is worth let's say two hundred thousand uh, but they no longer have the ability to pay their mortgage and they don't want to lose their house and their mortgage is like 60k right that's an amazing lead right because you can go in you can make them an offer probably less than the, the true market value, get yourself a great rental property, get yourself a great wholesale deal, get yourself a fix and flip, right? They have to sell because the bank is going to take their property if they don't pay off that 60K note. And the property is worth well over what the mortgage is worth. So when you're in an appreciating market, these people are amazing. Not so much if you're in a depreciating market, right? If you're in a down cycle, if they bought, they're underwater now, that's not really a good uh, lead. Honestly, you probably want to toss that one, right? Like uh, short sales, whoo. Short sales are everything but short, folks. You don't want to deal with short sales, right? Same property. They bought it for 100. They owe 60. But say now it's only worth 50. Well, that's a terrible lead for you. You're not going to get to do a deal there because they can't even pay the monthly mortgage payment on the 50 how do you think they're going to be able to sell you their house but bring ten thousand to the table they're not then the other thing would be possibly working it out with the short sale but the bank's going to want to put it on the open market plus it's going to take years you're going to tie up your time resources <laughs> that's not a good lead so it makes the top five if you're in an appreciating market people facing foreclosure similar to that is number three back taxes this is even cooler. I ranked this higher than number four because this one's always good, right? Because if you're not paying the taxes, you're not paying the mortgage first, right? So we're going to call like consider this to be separate, right? So this is going to be properties where the only issue is you're not paying the taxes. So there's going to be no mortgage, right? Because if the property has a mortgage on it, you're already not paying that mortgage and the taxes are going to be included in that. So you'll fall under category number four, which is going to be great in an appreciating market, terrible in depreciating markets. Number three, we're going to talk about properties where the owner has no mortgage at all, but they are no longer paying the taxes, right? This isn't typically because they can't afford to pay the taxes. It's often because they've walked away from the property. The property's just horribly dilapidated. They don't want to deal with it. They want nothing to do with the property. And you could swoop in, pick it up for the back taxes, or even work something out where you buy it and you assume the back taxes and you essentially get the government uh, to finance your asset for you because they'll let you do a payment plan on the back taxes, right? Great lead. If you're looking for motivated sellers, this one's awesome and it works in up markets and down markets because there's no mortgage to worry about. So it's very unlikely they're underwater. Now, you could still technically be underwater, right, if there's $100,000 of back taxes, because sometimes it takes uh, governments a very long time to do a tax foreclosure. If there's $100,000 of back taxes and the property's only worth seventy, dollars there's no deal. You can't do a deal, right? You have to pick it up for less than what it's worth, but much more unlikely that it's underwater when there's no mortgage, right? So that's why back taxes are number three. Great lead. If you're trying to wholesale, flip, buy and hold, that is a great lead. Number two. Love these. Dead people. Dead people are the best. There is no seller better than a dead motherfucker. God, man, I love dead motherfuckers. Dead people are great. What you really want is the nice little old granny house, right? Granny took really great care of her home for 50 years. Now she's dead. The siblings, the kids, whatever. The heirs inherited it. They're not in the real estate business. They want nothing to do with it. They're sad. They're like, oh, let's just get rid of this house. These are the kinds of people you want to be reaching out to. You want to be sending your letters to people uh, that have just dealt with the death in the family, right? The house is a burden. They want to put it behind them. So when there's a death, that provides us with an amazing lead. That is probably the second best lead. If you are marketing, trying to find people that just went through an estate, a, a death in the family with a property they need to liquidate, great, great lead. And then the best lead. This is where I've made my bread and butter, man. This is where I've made the majority of my money, right? Tired landlords. Almost every landlord is eventually going to become a tired landlord, right? I got this other show here on Holton Wise TV. It's called The Tenants from Hell Show. I highly suggest you watch it. If you're new to real estate, you definitely need to watch it. We show you the worst of the worst, right? Being a landlord is a tough business. Being a landlord feels very much like getting kicked in the dick by a mule. It does. It's a tough, tough business. Tenants do horrible stuff, right? Uh, you ever hear people say, 
oh, you don't want to be a landlord. You'll have to wake up at 3 a.m. dealing with clogged toilets, this or that. Like, there's just a lot of human poop in the business, right? I mean, there's just a lot of really messed up stuff. And we highlight all of that, so you should watch it. And then after you watch that, you'll be like, oh, I see how a lot of people eventually <laughs> wipe their hands of it, and they're like, hey, this business ain't for me, right? Can the business of being a landlord make you a lot of money? Yeah, but you got to have the stones for it, man. you got to have the right mindset, right? you got to be able to assess the situation that some piece of crap human being has been stealing from you for six months and then they've like literally put actual human poop on your property that you worked really hard for and then the government is going to make it very hard for you to evict them and then pr is going to come and say you're the bad guy because this person stole from you put actual poop there and you're just trying to take over your property but now you're the horrible asshole landlord evicting people right it's almost like the entire world is against you when you're a landlord, folks, especially if you live in one of those areas like out west, right? Your Seattle's, your Portland's, the entire state of California, right? All them skinny jean wearing wokies are out there running around talking about how terrible you are when in reality uh, you just worked really hard, saved up your money, tried to invest it, and then had people steal from you, right? These are all things that can happen to landlords, especially landlords who aren't prepared for this, landlords who don't do the proper tenant screening, landlords that don't know that now that they're landlords, actual human poop is a large portion of their life now, right? And being treated like crap is a large portion of their life. So many of them exit the business, right? I just did a video the other day. Uh, last year, 10,000 landlords left Seattle because of how insane Seattle is. I'll link that below, right? 10,000. also did another video. 40,000 people in uh, San Francisco County or some ca the county in California where San Francisco is, I think it was. I don't know. Something about California. I don't remember off the top of my head, but 40,000 landlords were like, screw this three-year eviction moratorium. We're just going to leave our properties vacant. We can't deal with the crazy woke laws, right? Got a video on that too. That's a lot of people leaving the business, right? So when you get these people that are dealing with the horrible stuff and you put a letter in their hand that says, hey, man, I want to buy your rental property, right? You know, who is more motivated than a guy who just comes home from a hard day of work, everybody's shitting on him, and he actually cleaned up actual human shit from his rental property he worked hard for. And he's just sitting there like, man, this really sucks. And then what do you know? Boom. Opens a letter. Hey, what's up, man? My name's Ray Ray. My wife left me. Now I'm a full-time real estate investor. I want to buy your house. Well, that sounds real good to that landlord, doesn't it? That is by far the best lead. The best, most motivated seller is the tired landlord. Now, as promised... Now you know the five most motivated people. As promised, I will tell you how to actually get your letters in their hands, right? Because that's what you need to do. You need to talk to these people. You need to identify these people. So what you do is you use software that allows you to search based on these types of criteria, right? You could search all the rental properties in your area. You could find properties that involve divorce. You could find back taxes. You could find foreclosures. You can do all of that by clicking the notes below this video and signing up for a free trial to PropStream. They have all of the data that will give you the mailing lists of all of the property owners that fit into the categories that you're searching for. And then they will also actually help you do your direct mail, help you create the letters and actually mail them out. And you need to then get those letters into these people's hands. So go ahead. Now the video's over. Click the notes below. Join PropStream. Get yourself a free trial. And guess what? After your free trial expires, if you're now making the big bucks like I am, like many landlords that utilize, or many investors rather, that utilize uh, these tactics I've taught you today, and you want to continue using PropStream on a monthly basis, since you click the link below, you're going to get a lifetime discount every single month for being a Holton Wise TV viewer. That's all I got for you today, folks. Also, uh, why don't you guys let me know your favorite motivated sellers, right? Because there's a lot more motivated sellers than the five reasons I've highlighted today. There's a lot more. These are my five favorite. I want to know your five favorite. Drop them in the comments. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.